Hmm. G'day folks, Jono Fru here. Today we're going to go through a water infiltration test. Now what you'll need is a little bit of water. You'll need an infiltration ring. I've used this old piece of pipe for about five years now. She's a bit battered and bruised, but it's done me very, very well. I've just sharpened the edge a little bit with a grinder and it's been able to take uh, all the punishment that I've given it. Um, if you were to make your own, I would recommend having it be a little bit shorter. This one's probably a bit tall, uh, but it's always worked well for me. Uh, this area here is on riverbed, on stone. Uh, so this is going to go in, uh, it's not going to be exactly like going into butter. But let's uh, let's just give it a go here. So you want to uh, push your infiltration ring nice and evenly down into the soil. Uh, and, and what, why I say evenly is you don't want to be smearing the uh, soil and creating an orifice in between the soil and the ring. Uh, that would be then a orifice for the water to escape down through and therefore it would void your test. So when we're inserting our ring, you want to be hitting, it pays if you hit the thing rather than miss it, you want to be hitting it down nice and evenly. So all around the edges, not like that. Um, it does help to have a piece of wood on top, but I don't have that with me today. So we're just going to improvise. Watch your fingers. So we're right down into that stone now. So what I now do is remove all of the biomass from out of the inside of the ring. So we can get an accurate measurement of our water. And now I'm going to get my little ruler as well as my little marker here which Murphy's Law has disappeared. I'll have to use this one. And we're going to measure 2.5 centimetres or one inch from the soil surface up. I'm going to mark it just like so. Now we're going to line the inside of our ring with a piece of plastic wrap. And why that is, is it's going to hold our water within our ring to give us enough time to press start on our stopwatch without losing any of that time. So we want to press right down into the corners. That's going to hold an accurate amount of water. And see, this is why you would ideally go with a slightly shorter infiltration ring. Nevertheless, that is what we're after. That's gonna hold our water. We're gonna pour our water up to that line that we created. So just pouring our water in nice and gently up to that line we created. Oh, making sure our bladder app is holding, like so. And now, we're going to look at our stopwatch. Let's go to stopwatch here. Stopwatch. And we're going to pull, and we're going to press start. Start. There's our water infiltrating. Now bubbles is really good. We want to see bubbles um, all through that uh, profile, and, and not from around the outside of the ring. That would indicate that um, we've got that orifice that we really didn't want to get. What do you reckon, Keith? What's our bricks levels, mate? <laughs> so looking for every last little piece of water to disappear. That's pretty impressive. And we're going to stop there. 33 seconds. So what we can do now is write that down. And now we're going to do another wrench, except for this time, 
I'm not going to use the water infiltration ring. I'm going to um, press start with my stopwatch. This is where it helps to have a helper get someone to press start as soon as your water's up to that line. So if you're really quick, you can do that. So here we go. Now I'm going to take two seconds off that one. It's going to be now like five seconds. Really poor example there of how to go. Uh, excuse me, Keith. That is not a chew toy. So remember we're going to add five seconds onto that because of my delay with the stopwatch. And with the last one being 34 seconds, we can expect this one to be a bit higher. Keith, is that helpful? Is that really helpful? Hey? <laughs> Alright, so we've still got shiny stuff there. We're going to wait for that shiny stuff to disappear. You can get in there with your fingers really make sure every last little piece is gone We're up to 107 still got shiny stuff it is infiltrating and we are done 119 plus 5 is 124 now we're going to do a third one And we're going to be a bit more efficient with our timer. Okay, here we go. And start. See, now this time, you see our mark there? Our, uh, our water line has barely dropped below it. It's just moving now. Just for some context, I've seen soils take more than half an hour to infiltrate the first inch. That would indicate obviously very low water infiltration. What that reflects also is the gas exchange and soil porosity. And basically if, if that's what you've got, soils that won't infiltrate an, an inch of water, um, certainly if it's if it's less than sort of 10 to 12 minutes, then your soil is going to be functional. If it's less than, than three, even better. Um, if it's less than 10 seconds, really, really good. Um, and I've seen plenty of soils take an inch of water in 10 seconds. This stuff, we went 34, and then we went 124. Let's see what this last one does. I'd expect it to be a bit longer than 124. But we're not going to end it there. We're going to then pull our ring out. When you, when you build your ring, you want to be able to have it so that it goes at least 100 millimeters below the soil. And then obviously at least at least 50 millimeters above the soil to give yourself enough room to measure your 25 mils above for your one inch of water and then enough area to be able to uh, work within when you're dealing with uh, a slant for instance and just makes it simple for your glad wrap you saw there that was a bit of a challenge to get the glad wrap to seal wow almost done I'm going to call that there 148. That's actually really impressive for three inches of water. Now, this is the cool part. We're going to pull it out. Hey, Keith. I'm going to get my, sh my spade here. We're going to have a look and see where that water went. Okay, this is a really important part. All right, so first observation is right down the bottom we've got no water so we can see we've got right down to the clay there so it hasn't quite gone down that deep which is 150 mil so let's see how deep it did go oh yeah we've got water here and just notice how it's behaved working through the soil profile so we've still got bits of consolidated consolidated compaction here when we open up these consolidated compaction clods we can see the water's not entered that far 
it's avoided that area that can be due to compaction or it can be due to hydrophobic soils from bacterial dominance bacteria when they um, one of their defense mechanisms is to coat themselves with a, a waxy coating to protect themselves and um, when they get dominant they can literally repel water from your soil all right getting into real uh, saturation in this top sort of four inches and it's gone right through almost all of the soil profile obviously it's not going to go through stones but this is where you want to get curious how does water behave in my soil this whole top four inches is, is absolutely saturated so reasonably good porosity right down to that four inches and then things sort of stop so what I recommend is if you do your first inch and it takes you longer than three and a half minutes don't worry about doing a second inch um, if it's quicker than three and a half minutes do a second inch if that one's quicker than three and a half minutes do a third inch recall this information down it's really useful information we can then start looking at how much effective rainfall we have rather than just the amount of rain falling out of the sky a lot of the time we get rainfall and it just runs off our soils it doesn't infiltrate so really powerful test it also indicates the as i said the gas exchange and soil porosity keith yep not helpful mate and please dispose of your glad wrap sensibly all right folks i hope you learned something today water infiltration test really powerful stuff get curious get dirty get in there amongst your 